Hi, my name is James Shepard, and today I want to give you five quick prospecting tips uh, for prospecting small business owners. Now, the reason I came up with these five tips is that um, I've been out in the field the last couple of days with um, a new sub-agent that I have here in the local area, and so I've been out prospecting with him, and there were some things that happened while I was out prospecting um, that kind of took me by surprise. And it's interesting, I hadn't been out prospecting for a little while, and when I got out there, uh, you know, some things I did differently that I just wanted to share with you that I really think will help you in your prospecting efforts for small business owners. Um, I've made these a little bit more general so that for those of you that maybe are selling our point of sale system, or if you're selling our merchant services, or payroll services, or web design, uh, whatever it is you're selling to small business owners, I think these uh, five prospecting tips will be a help to you. Um, number one, Walk into every business. Walk into every business. Let me tell you um, our prospecting plan here in our local area. Um, I'm going out uh, four times a week and uh, prospecting here in the local area. And uh, we're building kind of a new business here in the local area. I've already got a, a large local processing business here, but we're kind of building a new one in a new section. And so what I'm doing is I'm going out four days a week prospecting and we picked an area where we have a mall uh, in our area, and we are going from that mall to a Walmart um, that's about a 10-minute drive away. So what we're doing is that's the only area that I'm prospecting. So I'm trying to go to, you know, it's an area where we have a lot of small businesses, and so um, our goal is we're going to walk into every single one of those small businesses. Now, uh, let me give you a, a quick tip on this that will really help you out. Um Unless I am 100% certain that a business is corporate, okay, um, then unless I'm 100% sure that it's corporate or unless I know it's a doctor's office, a lawyer's office, a dentist, well, even dentists I'm walking into, so really lawyers, uh, you know, doctors and a couple other professionals like CPAs, I don't go to those, uh, but everybody else, every other business I walk into. Um, and, you know, I do that because it helps me to keep my route really tight. Um, too many guys, they, they try to target, you know, only specific businesses and it really can get to be a drag because after a while you're going to be going all over the place. Um, you know, I went out, um, I've been out uh, for two days this, this last week and that's when we started in this new market. And in those two days, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm literally within about probably a hundred yards of where I started. Um, because I've gone to all these businesses. There's like a little mini mall. There's an actual mall. So all the businesses I've gone to, maybe a little more than 100 yards, but definitely within a square mile, um, I'm going to these businesses that are all right in this one area. So now as I go back over there for my next time, for my follow-ups, all my follow-ups are all right there in the same uh, tight area, and I don't miss any opportunities. Um, you'd be really surprised. I've been really surprised as I went out um, going into certain businesses. I'll give you an example. Um, there's a business I went into called the Cold Stone Creamery. And I know that that business um, is a large business with lots of locations. So um, I almost didn't go into it. Um, but, you know, I said, you know what, I'm just going to go in every business and see what happens. And turns out that it is a franchise operation. And I got the cell phone of the franchise owner after going back twice. And I called him up and we're probably going to get together here in the next week. And he owns two Cold Stone Creameries and he owns some car washes. So that was a really, really good appointment for me. And I'm probably going to uh, make some pretty good money on that sale. Um, and I would never have even known if I wouldn't have walked into the business. So um, unless you're sure that it's corporate, walk in. Um, I had one business yesterday I walked into. And when I it was um, it's called Party Central, I think, and they sell party supplies. And when I walked in, gave him my card, I asked if they were corporate, and the lady said, yeah, we're, we're corporate. And I asked, well, how big are you? Is it regional or is it nationwide? She said, oh, we're nationwide, and they have an umbrella corporation and all this. So that was no big deal. It took me 30 seconds, and then I said, hey, thanks for your time. She handed me my card back, you know, and I turned around and walked out and went to the next business. So I don't mind wasting a little time if I'm not sure if it's corporate. I'd rather do that uh, than I would miss an opportunity to make a really big sale. Okay, so number one, walk into every business um, unless you're sure that it's a huge corporate location because, again, it might be franchised and many franchise operations allow the franchise owner to decide who they're going to use for merchant services uh, and for point-of-sale systems. Um, number two, you do your opening pitch carefully. Open carefully. That's my number two pitch. So walk into every business, number one. Number two, open carefully. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. I was actually kind of surprised at myself yesterday, especially with the opening pitch that I was using out in the field. 
Um, in the area where I was at, uh, it is a little bit more competitive than my normal market, okay? So I had to be a little bit more careful because if I wasn't careful and I just, if I would walk in and do my normal pitch and just say, hi, my name is James Shepard. I'm a local business owner offering credit card processing services. I do the credit card processing for so-and-so. I just wanted to find out who you guys are using. Um, Sometimes that might not have worked the best for me right at the very beginning, okay? Um, because as soon as I would say, hi, my name is James Shepard, I would probably have gotten shut down um, because it's a really competitive area. So let me give you a really good tip. Um, I hope you pay attention to this tip and maybe write it down and practice it um, because it's really, really effective. Number one, when you walk in, don't say anything sooner than a customer would say something. Let me explain what I mean by that. When you walk into a business... Um, for instance, I walked into a business yesterday. There was somebody at the counter. Okay. So what do I do? Well, I kind of walked around the store. I looked at some things, see what they have. Then I walked over to the counter, waited in line. Then, you know, didn't look like I was trying to sell something. And then when it was my turn, then I got to the counter. Then I spoke to the owner. Okay. So take your time, chill out, relax. Don't walk in there and look for the first person you can find and run up to them and tell them your pitch. Okay. Just slow it down. Don't say anything before a customer would say something because otherwise you're going to alert them that you're a salesperson, okay? So take your time, relax, have a big smile on your face. Um, when I walk in, I'm always having a big grin. I walk in and smiling um, and, you know, hi, how you doing today? Um, things like that, okay? So just being relaxed, uh, giving a nice introduction, how you doing today? Okay, next, um, before you get into your opening, say this line. This is what I say. I say, um, hi, my name is James Shepard. I just had a quick question for you. Okay? Practice saying that, just like that. Uh, you know, hi, my name is, I just had a quick question for you. Okay? So that is going, going to set the, mo the, the mode of the conversation to be in your favor because they're going, to will, they're going to be willing to listen to you to ask one question. Okay? So this is just a, a little tip for you. Again, you can use my standard opening and, and it does work really well, but this is something to kind of do before that. Walk in with a big smile on your face. Don't say anything until you, a customer would say something. And then when you do say something, just introduce yourself by saying your name and say, I have a quick question for you. Um, and then this is the question that I like to ask, um, especially if it's a little bit of a larger store, uh, a retail store. Um, I'll ask this question. I'll say, um, well, here's the question I have for you. Now, my name is James Shepard and I am a local business owner. Um, I offer credit card processing, point of sale systems, um, payroll services, a lot of different services for small business owners. And I was just curious, now, is this like a, a, a single location or are you guys like a big corporate uh, deal? Something like that, okay? Um, very informal, very relaxed, um, a good conversation starter. I'm introducing myself. I'm letting them know what I do. But then before they can respond to that, I'm saying, are you guys like a, a big corporate uh, deal or is this just like the, an individual location? Um, that is a great question to throw people off guard a little bit um, and to get them talking, okay? Um, just get them talking about it. And, you know, so the idea is, you know, oh, well, I wasn't even sure if I should come in here because I, I don't deal with big corporate accounts. I didn't know if you guys were a corporate account or whatever. One of the things you'll find, one of the keys to sales, you, okay, if you want to be a really good salesperson, let me put it this way. Um, being a good salesperson is important at the end of the sale, but at the beginning of the sale, the most important thing is not seeming like a salesperson, okay? So you want to almost walk in like you're kind of, you're just, you're relaxed, you're smiling, you're glad to be there, but you almost don't even know if you should be there. You know what I mean? You're, you're kind of like... So, um, I, you know, I'm just curious. I just have a quick question. Um, I do, you know, credit card processing, um, payroll services, uh, point of sale systems, things like that for small business owners. But I really wasn't sure if I should even come in. I didn't know if you guys are corporate or if this is like an individual location. And that just will leave it so broad and so open that it's very rare if you do that. Even in the most competitive market, it's going to be really rare for somebody to shoot you down right off the bat and say, you know, oh, we're not interested. Normally, they're going to at least say, oh, we're, a, we're individual or, well, it's a regional company. We have three or four locations, you know, whatever it might be. Okay. Um, so number one, walk into every business. Number two, open carefully when you walk in. Um, number three, Follow up religiously. 
follow up religiously, okay? Um, once you get somebody, you got to follow up with them, all right? Um, I have a list of prospects that we're generating, and every single day that I'm uh, prospecting, um, I am going to start at the beginning of that list, and I'm going to work my way through the entire list. And I am going, unless I already have them marked as not interested or closed, no, in my case, is unless I have them marked as not interested in that stage, every other stage of the sales process, I am going to take every action that I can possibly take with that particular lead that day. Okay. So once I contact the owner, and even if I haven't contacted the owner, if I might have in there a next action step of, Call the owner, okay? Like, for instance, um, on Monday I went prospecting and I had three companies that said, you know, we have two or more locations. They gave me the number for their corporate office, okay? So the first thing I did on Tuesday was I called all three of those places um, and tried to get in contact with the owner. I got in contact with one of them, which was the Cold Stone Creamery guy. Um, and that when I go back out tomorrow, I'm going to start out by calling, um, all of the other ones again. Um, every day I'm following up, following up, following up, following up. Every day, follow up religiously with all of the people that you have on your list until you realize, you know what, this is a waste of my time. This person is not going to buy from me. Um, then get rid of it, okay, and move on to the next one. Learn to take next action steps. This is part of the follow up religiously point, but learn to take next action steps. When you get done at a business, don't be satisfied for making a note, okay? Too many uh, agents, they make notes, okay? Uh, I met Bob. He's a nice guy. Um, he might be interested in working with us or whatever. Um, that's not enough, okay? Your note has to include a next action step, okay? In other words, what are you going to do next? What's the next thing that you're going to do with this account? So your note needs to include the next action step and when you're going to take that next action step. Number four, track everything. Track everything, okay? Um, you want to definitely make sure you know the name of the person you spoke with at the business. You want to make sure you know the name of the business owner. Um, you want to make sure you have the name and address of the business. Um, you know, all of those things are extremely important for your, your follow up. You need to have everything tracked because again, if you're going to follow up religiously, you've got to have enough information so that you can go back and actually do these, uh, these follow ups. It's very, very important. Okay. Lastly, uh, number five, delegate procedures, delegate procedures. Many of you are at a point where you are really good at selling. Some of you are watching this video right now and you are very good at making an initial contact. You're very good at closing sales. Um, but the problem is you've got a hundred customers or so and you know, you're only out prospecting for two or three hours a week because you have so much other stuff going on with your current customers. If that's you, if you're in that situation, it's time for you to delegate procedures. In other words, create procedures for how you want to deal with installations and customer service and then delegate them, okay? You can find somebody. For instance, um, what, where I'm going right now, I have a young man. He is a high school student. He's 17 years old and uh, he's a sharp guy. And he is going with me on Mondays and Tuesdays and he is learning how to generate leads. He's going to go with me for the next um, probably about two or three months. He's going to go with me for two days a week. And what he's going to do is two things. First of all, he's going to learn how to generate leads. And then secondly, he is going to learn how to do my schedule for that particular part of my life. Um, and so his job is when I show up to go prospecting, I have procedures in place. I want to follow up with everybody that we need to follow up with. Um, I want to make all the phone calls I need to make first, things like that. So when I get there... He's got a uh, list of you know uh, business owners to call. Um, he has a list of business owners we need to visit, and so boom, we go we go through that. So when I show up, I just show up and say, "What are we doing?" And he tells me where we're going. He tells me who we're calling. So he takes care of all that. Okay. Then I have somebody else. Once I make a sale, that I'm able to turn that sale over to, and they are going to key in the paperwork. Um, get all the paperwork done, and then they're going to go and install the terminal and provide the customer service. So that means all I have to do is go prospect and then close deals. And by doing that, I can now, of course, I'm, I'm pretty busy doing training material and webinars and all kinds of things like that. So I don't have a lot of time anymore. And I'm probably going to only spend about, honestly, maybe six or seven hours a week um, out 
on this new business venture that I'm working on, but I'll probably get two or three sales every week without any problem. And the way I'm able to do that is because literally all I'm doing is prospecting and closing deals. I don't do, I'm not doing anything else. I'm not even, you know, the guy that's with me is writing down the notes as I'm going. So, I mean, I'm just boom, going from one business to the next. And the thing about this whole model, some of you might think, well, I could never do that. I mean, that's got to be so expensive. It's not, okay? Um, it's, it's really not. I have the whole thing set up to where everybody's getting paid based on the number of sales that I make. And there's plenty of people out there that are looking for work um, that are competent, that you can train, and they're willing to learn, and they're also willing to become your partner. They're willing to partner with you and say, look, I'm only going to get paid X amount. The guy who's generating leads for us um, that's with me, I'm paying him $50 from every sale that I make from his leads. Now, right now, I'm paying him $50 even though he's just tagging along and watching me. So when I make sales from leads we get when he's with me, I pay him $50. And we have a little database tracking program for that. So, um, you know, pay him $50. The guy that's doing the installations, he gets half of the upfront money uh, that's left over after I pay the guy for the leads. And in exchange for that, he's providing all of the customer service and installations. And I'm also giving him a percentage of the residual. So you can be, make a very creative way to do this so that, uh, you know, it doesn't cost you an enormous amount of money and it allows you to get out there and make a lot of sales. Some of you guys that are full time building your local business, Um, honestly, if you have any kind of organizational skill whatsoever, um, and you're a good leader, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to get 20 or 30 deals a month if you're out there full time. Because again, if all you're doing is selling, what difference does it make if you're only making, say, say you give away so much of the upfront money, you're only making an average of, I don't know, let's say 150 bucks uh, per sale. Okay. Well, if you're making 150 per sale and you're making 30 sales a month, what's $4,500 in upfront money. Plus, how fast is your residual going to grow at that kind of a rate? Okay, so a lot of you need to think about how could I delegate some of these things um, and, and do it carefully. Now, if you have questions about how to delegate, how to grow your business model or prospecting, shoot me an email. Um, it's james at ccsalespro.com, james at ccsalespro.com. I'd be glad to help you out and answer any questions that you have. My name is James Shepard with ccsalespro.com. I hope this video has been a help and I hope that you have a wonderful week.